Welcome to Panorama. I'm your hostess, Gada Hamadani. Today, we'll bring you the success story of a single brilliant minded mother who emigrated to Canada when she was 25 years old. She started from scratch in an unfamiliar country, but she grew into a successful dynamic leader in network marketing and various businesses. Her mandate is to be part of the solution to the student loan crisis in North America by providing scholarship to 14 young women yearly. Uh, welcome, Agata Klimchak. Thank you. Uh, Agata, could you please tell us a, a little bit about your background and why you chose to come to Canada? Um, I'm Polish. Mm -hmm. uh, been raised in Poland uh, in the most recognized city, uh, Auschwitz, which is Auschwitz. So it's very well known around the world. And uh, finished my education, quite frankly, uh, in Poland as well. Um, decided to leave when I was 23. Um, that time, Poland was under still a communist um, system, and we young ones, uh, university students, really were looking into the opportunity to develop ourselves, grew up with our ideas, and uh, um, see the world from the different perspective than was offered to us at that time, right? So, uh, with the group of my friends, I decided to leave Poland uh, in 19, uh, 1890, no, 1985. Mm -hmm. uh, seven, I was in Greece, 1987. Two years I spent beautiful time there. Uh, learning to adapt, actually, to uh, be on my own uh, for the first time in my life. And uh, 1989, in January, my feet uh, landed here in Canada uh, at the airport. And uh, I started my journey, so it will be 30 years, right? Wow. And uh, 30 years, January 13, Friday, actually, it was, cold Friday. And uh, I don't regret, actually. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. I was able to uh, pursue with my career, um, find myself in a different way than I um, educate myself in Poland. Um, because I, after tourism and hospitality, I went to the university to become a teacher. And uh, I thought about this when I came to this country. I was even teaching in the Polish school uh, here on Saturdays mm -hmm. for a few years in St. Catherine's. But actually, I decided to evaluate my old diplomas and pursue my career into the marketing uh, industry. And, and, uh, and I succeeded. So here is a little bit about me yeah. <laughs> from the past oh, that's to till idea. today. Yeah. That was a brave of you, you know, it's like uh, to leave the country and just, uh, you know, move to a new country, right? So what was the most difficult moment in your life? And I know it's too soon to ask this question, but you know, it's like, let's jump into it. Yeah. So what was the most difficult moment in your life and how did you overcome it? Difficult? The, I, I've, you know, some Every single year, there is a something that we want to trigger change and decided to, to make the decision, right? But uh, difficult, it wasn't really actually leaving my country when I, be, I become an immigrant, which, yes, I agree with you. Uh, uh, when I'm looking from the perspective uh, back, I don't know if I will be make the same decisions because it was very spontaneous as a young individual. Uh, but I believe the most difficult was decided when I d decided to become a single mom, when I decided to um, end the relationship with the father of my children, who I met here actually in mm -hmm. Canada, uh, and plan to spend the rest of my life with him, um, have a vision of retirement together. And all of a sudden, a time came after 15 years of marriage and raising without any family member here in this country, uh, be completely on my own, decided to raise my children on my own. So when I'm looking at, at my past and my whole story as a, as a woman, as a, as a mother, I believe that was uh, that was difficult, the most difficult moment, and how I overcome um, it was, it was the decision that I have to step out of of the house that we were living together, with my two suitcases, and uh, 
start from the scratch to make sure I completely secure my children with the security and doesn't drastically change their life, um, whatever I create for them, right, as a family. So um, we come, it's, all, it's already 12 years and uh, I still remember that moment. So with all obstacles that went on my personal road, I found that was the, the decision of mine as much as right now it was the right decision. And uh, I am in the good terms uh, mm -hmm. with my ex-husband. He's in Vancouver and my children have a br great relationship with the father. Um, that was, I believe, mm -hmm. as a woman, as a mother, um, yeah, as a family yeah. um, creator, this is the, the, the f toughest. I know, yeah. Toughest one. And actually later on, you know, it's like, I think you founded the Brilliant Minded Women Organization, which was founded in 2013 and expanded into a nonprofit foundation in 2016. What was your vision to create the Brilliant Minded Women Organization yeah, sure. and why you started it? Um, because of the ladies like you yeah. um, um, and many, many more. Um, fortunate enough, I was in the business, in the network marketing business that allowed me to explore myself, grew to the successful leader and uh, stand in front of the thousands of people myself. It wasn't in Canada. Mm -hmm. It was everywhere else, in yeah. Europe, in the United States. and. Uh, and all of a sudden, one day I met, uh, it was in Dallas, when I met a lady from Canada who was on the stage doing extraordinary, incredible things for the community and, and for the children, for others. And I said, that is uh, insane almost that I have to travel so far to hear another Canadian lady wow. speaking, yeah. right? Is who doing so much do it. and then when I came back and I said well I've been recognized I I'm serving the purpose already and uh, there's so many ex extraordinary ladies who came to this country call Canada home and they and about their career and and family they serving the purpose they creating they explore their vision they doing so much and nobody knows about them except small group of people who surround by them, right? Yeah. And helping them to pursue this vision to help another human being. So mm -hmm. I said, well, with my all capability and my all strength, I believe it's about time to bring a Canadian yeah. woman mm -hmm. and, and everybody who helps them on the more public um, uh, level and that's how uh, you know I just I spoke with a friend of mine who is also accountant for this mm -hmm. beautiful brilliant minded woman organization foundation and a successful accountant in the industry and I said mm -hmm. he said yes you are the brilliant I, brilliant and I said that's exactly how the uh, my business gonna call a brilliant minded women Exactly. And yeah. here you are, we are here today, uh, yes, yeah. uh, coming close to the fifth gala. And I met many incredible individuals that we will celebrate the number 100 this year. Uh, the Brilliant Mind and Women organization provides scholarship and workshop programs. Could you tell us a little bit more about them, please? Yes, with pleasure. Um, every year since Brilliant Mind Women Organization uh, was uh, founded and created, we uh, were giving money back for mm -hmm. some causes, right? Then, uh, through my own experience, uh, friends of my daughter who was a student herself at that time, I realized how much children suffer. And it's not always about paying for the tuition for the school. Uh, children are hungry, children are um, cold, they don't have everything what they need uh, when they study. And we are here in Canada, we're not, we're talking about Canada, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, uh, our beautiful country. So we decided um, to 
expanded our Brilliant Money Woman organization and form a charity, non-profit charity, Brilliant Money Woman Foundation that mm -hmm. focus on the students who study here. Actually, it's a post-secondary post education, so mm -hmm. doesn't only is uh, um, provide the needs for you when you go to the University of College. That can be a course. Whatever it needs to be paid, you can always apply it to the Brilliant Money Women Foundation and uh, ask for the funds. Uh, regarding uh, mentorship, and we give the scholarships up to 40,000 per mm -hmm. four years. Uh, you may qualify for it. We do have a student who qualified for 17,000. Mm -hmm. She is receiving that money faithfully every single month and it just uh, covered her needs, whatever uh, she is um, and required to uh, mm -hmm. you know, finance. She's doing already masters right now. So how do they apply to it? Is it open to the public? Is it? It uh, is open to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, our uh, application mm -hmm. is on Brilliant Minded Woman uh, website. It's mm -hmm. brilliantmindedwoman.ca. Mm -hmm. And you will find under foundation, you will find a um, scholarship program explained to you. Everybody who will like to support also, mm -hmm. they can review what is uh, available for them as a appreciation in the return. Mm -hmm. And also students may find out uh, what is required mm -hmm. to apply. I'm not, we're not looking for the marks, we're building future leaders. And that's why we are uh, creating a mentorship for the, for the students as well. Why? We believe that uh, children have a lot to offer, but when they finish school, when they graduate, actually they are lost. They are not prepared to step in into the business or corporate world. Mm -hmm. And it's, a very, it's necessary and it's almost a must to build the skills when they, re during their, their um, time when they uh, have the scholarship and they connect with us, to build them to the position that develop their personal skills, team player skills, uh, philanthropy skills, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that is uh, the requirement. More details definitely on the website. They can always contact us directly, sit down with us. Parents are always welcome and uh, we, I'm hoping we're growing the more than 14 um, oh, children per, per year. Mm -hmm. And all, all those beautiful awardees that we reward every year, serving uh, the purpose as a mentors, as a coaches. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, directly and publicly as well if we create an, an event for And those. you accept donations from public or you, ha you just wait for the government fund? Uh, how do you fund the scholarship program. so far we uh, we raise the funds uh, okay. if it's a government grant usually is uh, we we receive one government grant last year mm -hmm. it was uh, we focus on the bringing awareness of it so it was um, more giving back to the students so it was not giving the money to the student okay. it was serving the purpose of uh, creating uh, the environment uh, for mm -hmm. everybody who will like to hear more about mm -hmm. this and uh, create the event that we gathering uh, mm, business world and mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in the one room that allow them to not only meet and greet and network but also appreciate and celebrate mm -hmm. everybody students who receive the scholarship and our D's that are our, our mentors and coaches now that's wonderful yeah. okay women usually you know it's like we often you know we often feel guilty right setting boundaries and prioritizing you know their needs so as a single mother of two were you able to prioritize your needs without feeling guilty or selfish? Um, every time when I make the decision that was taking the time from the family, uh, it was uh, directly for my needs or for career needs. Mm -hmm. I explained myself that this is for, uh, for my children to open the door. So did I have, did I have a regrets or I felt guilty? Probably at that time, um, yes, because, you know, we always feel guilty if we are not giving the uh, 24 hours to our family, exactly. right? Yes. But at the same time, uh, I knew 
that I'm doing the right thing because if it's uh, uh, bring the opportunity, more opportunities for my children mm -hmm. and uh, for, for our development mm -hmm. as a family and me as a, as a woman. So um, do I regret? No. Do I felt guilty? Uh, maybe there were moments, but at the same time, uh, I mm -hmm. just truly knew okay. that is that is uh, yeah. everything. What I'm doing is to for them. Have you ever felt resentful? You know, it's like of people asking too much of you. Um, no, I tell you why. Uh, people may ask me a lot mm -hmm. of uh, for lots of favorites and. Uh, and I learned to say no, because I also receive a lots of no, mm -hmm. right? So um, if the people asking me, and I know people expect a lot from me and uh, included a favorite, mm -hmm. uh, and I just sometimes I just question myself, is this, is this uh, serving the purpose, yes. right? So um, if they take personally and they feel resemblous, well, um, I, I think it's more on another side than on mine, because if I'm helping, I'm helping. Mm -hmm. If I'm serving, I'm serving. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can't, I simply, they, they feel it and they know, so. Yeah. Agatha, what brings you joy? See my children um, communicate the way they communicate, mm -hmm. uh, see them be respectful uh, and uh, truly bonded with the family and uh, culture that actually I grew up with. And uh, um, they're doing this on the sincere level, not because mm -hmm. I tell them to mm -hmm. or I want them to, but because they really appreciate um, my, my my old home culture mm -hmm. and every single one. The joy that my children were, uh, right now they're on their own, but you know what, till today, they bring, um, in my home was always every color of the skin, every language yes, yeah. uh, all around the world. And we had amazing time and I continue that through, you know, a channel and, and uh, committed to and, and, and uh, communicate with, with others. And the joy to see practically my work is done by the end of the year when we celebrate. This is the most appreciative uh, moment and joyful time for me that everybody enjoy and connect and vibrate on the same level. Mm -hmm. And the energy is there, you can feel it. So yeah. what can be better, right? This exactly. is like another child. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Th that, that's all, yeah, okay. that's it. Jay. So have you ever experienced the negative voice in your head saying things like, you can do it? And what do you do to motivate yourself when you don't feel like continuing? I always hear that voice mm -hmm. because I set my dreams and the vision is very high. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's uh, very difficult to understand um, for others, right? So I hear that I hear this inside my head, mm -hmm. and I hear this to my face on okay. the top of that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how I motivate myself, um, I learn to stick to the vision, mm -hmm. regardless how it is. And I know with my impatient um, personality. Uh, sometimes it's it's uh, it's very difficult to to deal with my own because it's it's the moments that uh, you know you just want to close the door and give up, right? Yes. Uh, but usually uh, I don't close the door. I reach out to others. There are always another person that I can share, and uh, they will not motivate me, but they say, "Oh, come on." Yeah. You are that far, mm -hmm. okay? You're not gonna give up at, yeah. at this uh, right at the moment. And then I said, okay, am I doing this for me, or I'm I'm serving a purpose? Mm -hmm. And when I realize that I'm serving the purpose, and this is not this is actually for for much higher than just individual uh, mm -hmm. as an individual, mm -hmm. 
then uh, definitely nothing is stopping me. And okay. I think I, you know what, I, I wish everybody looking from that perspective, not from our own side, yeah. if it's serving us, but if it's serving bigger than us, it definitely is worth it to stay motivated regardless how we feel. <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. So we're going to ask you a question, you know, some personal things, you know, it's like what's been your greatest or favorite personal accomplishments and why? Accomplishment. Yeah. Personal uh, accomplishment. Personal. Yep. My development, my personal development. Mm -hmm. um, I changed with the time, with the age. How? Um, more calm, mm -hmm. more open-minded, um, mm -hmm. definitely um, more humbled. Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I shouldn't say self-observed, but uh, um, I was fortunate enough to have some quite secure and uh, um, good life in mm -hmm. my old country, even I decided to leave, right? So I believe uh, that the, my surroundings uh, used to be m with the only specific group of the people. When I am looking today uh, at me, mm -hmm. I appreciate uh, um, simple things mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is the achievement that is the this is something that it definitely um, allowed me to do extraordinary things mm -hmm. yeah. you know and i, I hope i yeah. hope you know what i mean right uh from a somebody who is not always uh open-minded mm -hmm. to everything around mm -hmm. to the person that appreciate um, different culture, um, uh, learning, and uh, I believe my own self-development and, and uh, my growth mm -hmm. to the much higher level. Yeah, I grew up to be more humble, and this is this is definitely uh, a success. Yeah. Uh, I believe we all learned that here in Canada, right? Yes. We came from different backgrounds, yes. you know, we have our culture, we have our, you know, it's like uh, traditions and stuff. But then when you come to Canada with multicultural environment, you know, you, you have to actually, you start to realize, you know, it's like, and recognize others. And that's what, you know, changes, True. Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I, for me, it's a success. It is. I truly is. appreciate that mm -hmm. and I value this yeah. and I am lucky that yeah, I right. was able to uh, uh, be exposed to it right. and, and learn from it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It gave me, that, that's the best education I ever received and, and my heart, that's a success. Okay, so last question. Yo. As a grown woman, if you could speak to your younger self, what advice would you give her? Um, first, respect yourself and others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always, you know, um, say, don't be afraid to dream and, 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 you know, open your mind on the higher level. But I believe if we can respect, and I said, respect, truly respect others, every single door will be open mm -hmm. because we will know how to deal in the different situations and we will not take uh, our failures that we may experience yes. as a as a uh, drama mm -hmm. because the inner ourself will allow us to continue with the pride with the dignity with the sincereness and kindness and and will uh, and and don't ever stop learning Yes. Yeah. Doesn't mean we have to go to school for it, mm -hmm. but we can, um, you know, that every single day we expose to another person who can teach us something. Be open-minded. True. Uh, always look for the opportunities, and definitely uh, don't treat your life as a one uh, uh, road 
to the success there is there is going to be a lots of upside downs mm -hmm. but if we if we continue to learn and we respect others and ourselves there's definitely a bright light at the end thank you agata thank you until next time have a good night <laughs>